Hey, what's going on, friends? I'm JD, the Chief Learning Architect at Exonify, and you're watching In The Know. It's the show with hot insights and even hotter wings. And today, we're joined by Ryan Dillon. He's the VP of Corporate Development at Thought Industries, where he focuses on strategic initiatives like partnerships, new customers, and M&A. He's also the host of Hot Takes, an online interview show exploring the importance of customer education programs while guests in increasingly spicy chicken wings. Ryan lives in the North Shore of Massachusetts, but is an avid New York sports fan. He also has a cat, a dog, an amazing wife, and two identical girls on the way. And he listed them in that order on his bio. Ryan Dillon, you're in the know. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Not a problem, not a problem at all. So your show, Hot Takes, is inspired by the popular Hot Ones YouTube show, where Sean Evans interviews celebrities like Pedro Pascal, Paul Rudd, and Billie Eilish while eating spicy chicken wings. And ever since I first watched Hot Ones, I've been looking for a reason to eat chicken on the internet. And Ryan, you're making that dream a reality for me here today. So as you can see, we've got the gauntlet of seven wings in front of both of us, and we're gonna see how it goes as we discuss the importance of customer education. So Ryan, how are you feeling being on the other side of the virtual table? I think uh, the doctor gets to taste his own medicine, so I'm excited for that. <laughs> very true, very true. So usually it's the guest who's never done this before. This time it's the host who's totally unprepared and I'm not very good with spicy food. So I literally have a backpack full of water. I have an unnecessarily large jug of milk available to me as well, but I still think the viewers are gonna get a little bit of a show. So Ryan, are you ready to dig in? Let's dive in, my friend. All right, let's start off. All right, first up, we have the Mango Chipotle. Mango Chipotle. Not bad, not bad at all. Nice, sweet taste. What do you think, Ryan? Beautifully sweet, beautifully sweet. Great way to start us off. Very nice. So can you tell us, what's the biggest difference between customer education and corporate learning and development? Well, corporate learning and development is uh, historically known for internal training, employee onboarding, everything employee centric. Customer training and what we focus on at Thought Industries is really the external side of things, what we call the extended enterprise, which is making sure that you're able to impact and educate everyone that is part of your revenue generation cycle, whether that is customers, whether those are partners, distributors, or even able to do Gotcha, gotcha. So I know there's probably a question out there in the audience right now. And in case anyone out there is wondering, no, Ryan and I are not related. This is just a coincidence. <laughs> but I have to ask you, Ryan, what's the best part and the worst part of being a Dylan? Oh, well, the, the best part is, uh, you know, it's a strong, strong Irish name. You get to uh, meet a lot of other friends just like us when there's a lot of Dylans out there. Um, I would say the worst part is no one knows my first name. I seem to get in my emails Dylan a lot. Uh, and no one can really seem to spell it correctly. They always think it's got like a French Dillion. I don't know where the extra I comes from. Why? Why? People I've known for years continue to spell my last name wrong. And I continue to point out there are famous people with the last <laughs> yeah. name. Come on, everybody. One eye. One eye and Dylan, but it's nice to know that it's a shared experience among us. So let's move on. The next up, we have the growling gator sauce. Growling gator. Ready to go? Ready. All right, I got a little bit more, a little bit more heat. A little bit more starts, Yep. It's going to ramp up a little bit on us right now. So if you're actually watching along right now live on LinkedIn and you're just waiting for me to melt down, you can actually replicate our hot sauce gauntlet at home. I'm actually already feeling it while I'm talking right now. So what I need you to do, if you're on LinkedIn live right now, drop the keyword luminate into the LinkedIn chat for your chance to walk away with five of the sauces that we're sampling here today. Because actually five of them are from your show. So who makes them and uh, where can people get them? 
Oh, gosh. Well, now you're putting me on the spot. Uh, Castaway Hot Sauce is based out of Florida. Uh, and it was a recommendation from one of my first guests this year on uh, Hot Take Season 2, which was Denise Russo from SAP. One of her friends that she went to school with launched a hot sauce company. And I like to switch things up every single season with new hot sauces. So this was a brand new one. And uh, I think they are all based off of like the Florida Gators. So all the names are based off of football names uh, or, or things of that nature. So uh, what do you think? I, it's an interesting coincidence that all seven of our sauces have a local connection to me. So I'm in Florida right now. Five of the sauces are from Florida and two are actually local providers from Waterloo, Ontario, up in Canada. So we have Island Suns Canada and Wicked Smart represented in the gauntlet. Here today. So, but speaking of hot topics, whenever we talk about corporate learning programs, ROI, constant topic of conversation, constant challenge. So helping people learn, obviously a good idea, but the business ultimately wants to know what it's getting for the investment. So how does that work in customer education? Where do you find the ROI to justify the investment in that type of program? Sure, absolutely. So a lot of times when folks look at customer education, they look at the most obvious data points that come to you right off the bat. And those things are things like completion rates and engagement metrics. And that doesn't really tell a story. What you're looking for out of customer education, if you're not monetizing and directly generating revenue, which many successful mature programs do, you're looking at lagging indicators. And those lagging indicators based are people that complete education content are more likely to understand your product a lot better, which means that they're most likely going to use your product a lot better, get more value out of your product, which in turn around the renewal time means that they're most likely going to renew. And when you're doing it really well, you're able to actually penetrate more of your customers. So if you go and sell to a B2B client, instead of getting one or two users, the value you're gaining actually spreads. You're seeing expansion opportunities and not just the renewal uh, point of view. So that's really the direct impact that education has is lagging indicators. I always call it the six degrees of Kevin Bacon to education because you have to see the wave of impact from completion to something like renewal or expansion. So just like we talk about in corporate learning and development, making sure there's a clear connection to the impact that you're looking for. And it's not just education for the sake of education, as it Absolutely. were. It's a great point. Let's move on. We're going to sauce number three. This is the Bajan Taiga. This is actually one of our sauces from Waterloo. It's a Barbadian styled mango scotch bonnet sauce with some Naga ghost pepper action. Ready to go, Ryan? Cheers. All right, let's dive in. What do you think, Ryan? New sauce for you. Getting spicier. This is one with the tiger on it, so it definitely brings its claws out. Yeah. Wait, that's a new tagline. New tagline for the sauce right there. We're doing, doing the work. So when we dig into the idea of customer education, what are the attributes of a great customer education program? So uh, customer education programs that begin to mature are first and foremost creating content in different modalities being able to create content and not just long form content, short form content, delivering it in micro learning, being able to create VILT, ILT, blended learning programs, because you want to be able to match people where they are. And the psychology around learning is that people learn in different ways. So that is one major attribute that I always look for is the different styles of content that they have. It's also the volume of content that you have across a wide variety of, of topics. So starting out, people really focus in on the major focal points of product education because that's very, that's very direct. How do I onboard my customers to know my product? But I also really love to be able to see skills-based competencies. So educating people on not just how to use the product, but also how to do your job well with that product involved. So that's another uh, aspect of it. The third for me is when I look at a mature organization, my favorite thing is monetization. Revenue generation. How do you make the money uh, to not just be a lagging indicator of success so that when you go to your CEO and say education is really impactful, they'll say, show me the money. 
Well, revenue streams of being able to educate and monetize content is something that is super important for a mature organization. So I really like that. And then the final thing is making sure that you're analyzing the right data and integrating with the right uh, technologies, your CRMs, your marketing tools, connecting product adoption and product usage to education. Gotcha. So uh, I would summarize that by saying, making sure it's not just about what the buttons do in a product, right? It's about how it integrates into the workflow and people can do their jobs more effectively as a result of having that education and that product and technology at their, at their service. Absolutely. Great points. So let's move on. Now we have the pe pina cocoa. So this one's going to have fresh pineapple, coconut cream, and a burn of scotch bonnet. Ready to go? Ready. Dive in. I'm going to have to admit it. I'm feeling it already. We're only at uh, wing number four. How are you doing, Brian? Oh, it is, uh, it is kicking. I love it. It felt like a little bit of an island, but then the burn came in. All right. So you're, you themed an entire talk show around the whole eating spicy wings thing. So I have to ask, what's your favorite episode of Hot Ones and why is it Paul Rudd? <laughs> well, Paul Rudd, I'm not sure whether he filmed it when he was 21 or when he was 42, because that man just does not age whatsoever. Uh, and he's also from my state, New York, or not from there. He lives there now. Uh, and uh, I, I really enjoy him. But I also like the Shaquille O'Neal and Post Malone ones as well. Very true. Very true. I just have to say, I have to say this since we're doing the hot sauce gauntlet right now. I have to say, Ryan, look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? Not me. Not me. <laughs> All right. So we talked about the essential components of a great customer education program. In your experience, what's missing from most customer education programs? What, are, what do customers need that they're not getting when it comes to this topic? Oh, man. That is a, a great question. And I think it, again, goes to adaptive-based uh, learning experiences, making sure that people have content in the moment of need when they're actually experiencing the pain. So a lot of times we put education on them because we think that's the education they need at onboarding or when a new product is released. But what I really love is contextual based education. If I'm in a product, say in the reporting section, I need to be able to be recommended reporting based learning content because that's what I'm learning on. It also helps to do, when you do that, it increases your conversion rate. You know, when you're on uh, uh, any type of, you know, when you're on Instagram, let's say, and you get an advertisement for something that you maybe have been thinking about, you're more likely to buy that. So when you get content that is contextually based and delivered to you in the moment of need, you're much more likely to engage in that, which then again drives those lagging indicators of, if I engaged in content, I'm going to use your product, I'm going to get more value, I'm going to expand. I'm going to pay you more money and I'll renew. So much of the conversation around effective learning and development comes back to that concept of the moment of need. So great to hear that it's equally applicable when it comes to customer education. So now we're on the back half, Ryan. Next up, we have the Soka from Wicked Smart. That's in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. We have organic peaches, zesty limes, and habanero. Dive in. The nose is starting to run. All right. All right. I've met many napkins, many napkins and tissues by my side. Haven't gone milk yet. And I, I will say, milk. JD, I am surprised this is one is from Waterloo. When I first got it, I thought it was a Boston-based one because I'm living in, in Massachusetts with the wicked smack. But we got both the, coasts now, I guess. Slight different pronunciation of the smart yeah. based on location, based on location. So, <laughs> Ryan, we have a recurring segment on our show that we've only done once called Explain That Gram, where we pull a picture from our guest's Instagram and ask them for greater context. So you can, can you tell us what's going on in this photo? <laughs> well, that's me on the dance floor at a, at a family member's wedding. And if you see the people behind me, uh, that is my, my mom to her with her back turned to me and my sister and my brother-in-law. And oftentimes when we're on the dance floor at weddings, uh, the sweat starts to trickle. Uh, and so we will take what is typically used for eating wings or eating anything, uh, the napkin from the table and tie it around our head like a bandana so that we can control the sweat. Gotcha. So in other words, if Ryan invites you to a wedding, 
uh, you're going to want to go. Or maybe just invite him. He'll bring the party to a whole nother level. So let's dive into the technology side of our conversation around customer education. How does a platform designed for customer or partner education differ from your traditional learning management system? Sure. So when you think about the traditional learning management systems, which there are seven, 800 of them, just a few, uh, they're predominantly based for university settings, like the blackboards or canvases of the world, or they're based for corporate compliance, the cornerstones of the world, uh, the Sabas, several hundred of them. And those are created specifically for the requirements of HR or required learning. There isn't great user experience. It's clunky. It doesn't have a lot of commercialization aspects to it. So you're lacking marketing, e-commerce, all of the things that go around recommending or a moment of need learning. Customer education or thought, at Thought Industries, where we support uh, all external based learning, we focused heavily on the user experience as number one. Number two, marketing and commercialization and monetization. How can you sustain a business around education. So the predominant areas we focus on are education as a business, monetizing and training, or education on your products. And that includes the need to get attention and engagement and stickiness, not just from these wings, but from the learning. You want to be sure to do that through great learner experiences, great content experiences, and a lot of great notification triggers. And then the final thing I'd say is the extensibility. A lot of LMSs just manage learning. That's it. We need to make sure as you're running a business on education to manage all of the aspects of data that go into that. Marketing, product usage, CRM, everything in, in, uh, that involves around that. So that's the major differences, I would say. Just a few, just a few, but a great summary, great connection to the theme of today's show as well. So we've got two more wings to go. The next up, and I have to show it just to make sure that the internet understands why I'm saying this. This one is the ball kicker. Okay, football reference, everyone. Football reference from Florida. Again, big football state. So uh, we've got habaneros, orange habaneros and garlic ready to dive in wing number six. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh, no comment. Oh, you went water. You went water. You're feeling it a bit. I'm still not going to the milk, but we got one more wing left to go. I might need the entire jar of milk when we get there. But Ryan, in a time when budgets are, are getting crunched, how can customer education professionals make sure companies continue to invest in these types of programs? Well, you need to make sure that you're capturing the right data. You need to be able to tell the story. That's as simple as it is. Um, you're not going to be able to convince people based on completion or active users in a month or a year that, oh, we're super successful. Because at the end of the day, you need to be able to prove to your C-suite, your CFO, that the, the investment is worth the return. And what they look at when it comes to metrics of value is retention, user uh, customer growth, expansion, um, and making sure that you're able to tell that story. And that's why in the last question you asked me, the integrations and communication of data between not only the LMS, but also your other business tools, marketing, CRM, product usage is the most important thing. So tailor your story, not towards learning, but instead how learning impacts your business. You're speak, speaking my language, Ryan, when it comes to, I feel in learning and development in general, we need to talk less about learning more about impact and realize that learning is one of the things we can do or one of the things we can help people do to improve performance and get the impact we're trying to drive. So great points as we head into the last wing. We may not have bomb for those out there who are Hot Ones fans. We're not going that far. Sorry, I have to function in the second <laughs> half of the day. But we do have Blackbeard's Revenge as our final sauce. Uh, cayenne, habanero, red pepper, and just this, it's one of those scary red colored sauces. So Ryan, cheers. Cheers, my friend. Let's, let's do this. <sighs> Woo. I'm going to have a problem talking because <sighs> breathing makes it worse. So 
I have only one thing to say to you right now, Ryan Dillon. <coughs> we made it to the end of our gauntlet. <laughs> seven wings up, seven wings down. With your mouth on fire, mind ablaze, what would you say to the executive who thinks that the initial implementation program and a help desk is enough to enable their customers? What's your response? I would say that you're you're doing a disservice to your customers. Um, you are not being able to actually recognize the impact that your content and that your products have the potential to be able to create. Support desks and help desks are great, but so you're just relying on the customer to become its own advocate and its own expert. You need to go out there and create the impact for them and you're leaving dollars <laughs> on the table. So if you are an executive out there that's questioning education, I would say don't think of it as education. Think of it as a tool that is going to drive your bottom line. It's getting worse, Ryan. It just lingers. It is not my friend, but you are my friend. Now, great answers. Look at you taking on the wings of death, living to tell the tale. Now, there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. Tell the people out there how they can connect with you, learn more about Thought Industries, and check out the next episode of Hot Takes if they want to see people suffer on the internet. Absolutely. Well, uh, two Dylans, who would have thought? Uh, what a great show. You can come see us at thoughtindustries.com. We are uh, the real uh, driver of external customer education. We've won uh, best educa uh, customer education technology in the market for the last several years running. We focus <clears throat> on customer training, extended enterprise, partner training, and uh, come say hello. Highly recommended. Make sure to check out again, thoughtindustries.com. Thanks again, Ryan, for joining us today and giving me the chance to live out my hot wings on the internet dream. And thanks to all of you for tuning in to In The Know. And let's see if I can get through the conclusion of the show. If you dropped our special keyword into the LinkedIn live chat, be sure to look out for a DM from our Exonify team and you might be our lucky sauce recipient. If you've enjoyed watching me suffer on the internet, be sure to subscribe to ITK. Head over to exonify.com slash ITK for show announcements and reminders. You can also check out the entire ITK collection on the Exonify YouTube channel or listen to In The Know on your favorite podcast app. We may not have hot wings on our next episode, but we do have what's hot in L&D because we're going to be joined by Donald Taylor. That's right. Global Talent Development Thought Leader and Chairperson of the Learning Technologies Conference. Donald Taylor is going to be here, and he's going to take us on a time-traveling journey to discover what the future really holds for learning and development. Plus, Don's going to give us a sneak peek into the Learning Technologies UK Conference coming up in May in London. So tune in on Wednesday, April 26th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for a visit from the chairman, Donald Taylor. Until then, I've been JD. Now you're in the know, and always remember... Why chickens don't like to plan. They'd much rather wing it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>